Hi everyone, my name is Mudit. I'm Rumana. I'm Cindy. I'm Ichun. And us, we're going to be discussing STC Admona's strategic analysis. Hope you will enjoy our video. Thank you. Hi guys. Hello everyone. Here we are sitting together to discuss about our company strategy, how we have been doing and how we can proceed with our glorious achievements in future. We all know that SBC Arimona is under Coca-Cola Mutil as due since 2005, and our company has a glorious history of 100 years nearly. SPC Admona is under Coca-Cola Amatil since 2005. It was actually three companies came together, Shefferton Preserving Company, SPC, did merger with Admona in 2002 and began, became SPC Admona and bought Henry Jones IXL in 2004. Our mission is currently connected to the uh, mission of Coca-Cola Amatil that is think local and act local. And uh, we are, our vision, what we can say, is continuously supporting Australia with healthy food to contribute to the nutrition of the nation as well as being responsible to the local community. After struggling years of financial loss during 2010 to 2013 due to fall in export income due to rising Australian dollar, expensive factory upgradation, loss in production due to drought. In 2014, Coca-Cola Amatil writes off 400 million stock value of SPC Ardimona. But then SPC fights back. Thanks to the support of Honorable Retired MP Sharman Stone, new Managing Director of Coca-Cola Amatil, State Government of Victoria, thousands of local farmers, the employees of SPC and flooding purchase of customers and the support of Australian citizens through social media campaign. SPC have increased sales, boosted up its brand image and introduced new products and came into break even by the end of 2015. Now it's time for reinventing the company strategy to continue legacy of premium food leading company nourished from golden soil of Australia. Now that we are facing some challenges now with uh, unprecedented strong Australian dollar which has increased the price of our exports and also the a risk is there for cheaper imports from outside country which is not very quality foods. So we can discuss more about our strategic position and we should think how we can reposition us for the better future. Okay guys, now we can hear from Mr. Mudit, our finance manager, about the strategic position of our company. Thank you, Romana. I'll move on to our market. We're running to the preserved food market, as all of you guys know, and we provide a lot of healthy options for our customers. When it comes to, uh, we are one of the top three major companies in food processing industries, and our share is 19.7% um, of 5.9 billion. So that means it's $1.16 billion out of the whole share of market share. To look at the market potential, demand from supermarkets and grocery stores, um, if you look eight years back, we were around 2%. And we're slowly uh, uh, the steep low uh, in 2011, where we were minus 2%. And that's demand from supermarkets and grocery stores. And it, it climbed up to around 5% um, around 2014. And now we're back stable at around 2% demand from supermarkets and grocery stores. So that's really beneficial for us. And now we, if you look at the um, fruit, consumption expenditure. Um, 2005, we were around 2,000, 2.2 billion, around there. And there was, a, there was a bit of a lot in 2011, where we got to about $2 billion. Now, from there, there's a steep rise, and got up to uh, $2.6 billion. 
uh, and we're projecting it's going to go even higher due to strong growth sales and uh, higher customer demand. What stage of the life cycle we're in? As you can see from the graph, uh, we're in the decline stage at the moment, just on the brink. That's because there's an increase in competition from imported and private label products, um, and also due to increased cost and production rising through shortage, increased overheads and wages. There is pressure in our manufacturing and processing. Let's talk about globalization. As you guys know, imports account for a large share of domestic demand. Domestic competition in the Australian market has intensified as participants develop and implement strategies to survive and grow and rising import penetration. But some major players, such as Heinz and SBC Ardmore, rationalization has meant the closure of manufacturing skills and facilities in Australia and the relocation of the production to New Zealand or low cost countries in Asia, which has boosted imports over the past five years. As you can see from the graph, exports account for a significant proportion of industry revenue. Export growth has come from rising demand in Asian and Middle Eastern markets for high quality Australian food products. Thank you, Madi. Uh, for all this information about your company. Now we have Cindy, our uh, marketing manager. Cindy, can you uh, tell us about the market positioning of our company? Okay, Maya. So I will use Portal Hypothesis to describe our industry scenario. For the intensity of a competitor threat, our brand as currently industry of the canned foods is nearly mature and the demand growing is slow now. There are numerous competitors and a private label brand among the market. The only way to win the competition, we must differentiate ourselves to have the specific brand awareness in customers' mind. And we can't neglect the substitutes such as the fresh food and the frozen food I believe we still have the advantage as the canned food is more convenient and can store for a long time. Also, we should be aware of the buyer power. They are so strong as they can choose other brands as they are well informed of the product by their smartphone. And also, their switching cost is relatively low. I think we should focus on our buyer power and we should beware of the raising private label. As you can see in the graph, um, we have five types of customer. We have the single parent with their kid, elder, tourist, and cafe, restaurant, and a charity group. Firstly, for the um, parent with kid, they require for the convenient food and easy to repair for their kid. And also they want their kid to prepare by themselves. So I think SPC can provide them with the ready, easy open and of course the nutrition food camps for them. So for the elderly, they would like to consume the food which are easy to reach, healthy and also good quality. Um, in our newest product, you can see the profile. You can see there's a pull tab, which is easy to pull out, and we always guarantee our quality. For the tourists, the convenience is the overriding concern to them. As we launch our snacking package in the, um, in the convenience store, it's portable and easy to store in their bags. Also, they can consume the food, which can be stored in a longer time. And for cafe, restaurant, and a charity group, they demand a certain amount much more than the individual. So we provide that in a pack of 24. Uh, here's our marketing position map for the SPC and our competitors. We use two variables, which are the quality and the price. As you can see, SPC is positioning as high quality with reasonable price. As recent marketing campaign, we target as attracting customers to recognize every single product we provide is Australian grown 
intend to be uh, perceived as high quality. However, as you can see, other competitors such as the Golden Circle and Berry, they are also Australian brands. But as we use the Australian farmer to differentiate from them, we evoke the sympathy of our customers. If I buy the SPC brand, I'm helping Australia farmer and Australia agriculture industry. Excellent. We have a very beautiful and clear market positioning analysis. Thank you, Cindy, for that. Now let us hear from Weijian, our production and operation manager. Hey, Romana. Well, I want to introduce our production process of fruit cans. As we can see at the PDF, we call it process diagram of flows. The first step is raw material delivery. The farmers deliver the raw fruit to our factory on the same day they are picked. We aim to process the fresh fruits as close as possible to within 24 hours of delivery time. And the second process is we call it sorting. Uh, this within the factory is to sort the fresh fruits by size and color, damaged and undamaged stock. Fruits unsuitable for canning is used for juice or pulp to use in our byproducts such as ice creams or puddings. And then after sorting, we have to washing, peeling, and second sorting. The fruits are transported to our conveyor belts to a machine which halves and cleans the fruit. The fruits are washed with caustic soda. It's very dangerous. And the fourth process is filling and liquid adding. Perfect halves of fruits can can immediately and the remaining fruits are sliced and diced. The fruits are put into cans, plastic jars or cups of various size, then a liquid medium of natural sauce, light sauce. The finally is cooking, cooling and labeling. In our production line, we have two protein efficiencies. One is machinery and one is raw material. The machinery in the manufacturing facility can be broken into three broad categories. The one is individual fruit lines, and the second is joint processing, as you know, to uh, avoid the bacteria and the labeling and the packing. And the low material in the manufacturing process can be wasted into four categories. The first one is fruit core removed. When, when we remove the core, you know, the whole quality of our products will remain. When we peel, removed, and dehydrate our quality and you know the quantity of our products will also decrease and uh, the other is disqualification products and the others such as accident factory or plant shutdown the strategies what we have already implemented to reduce in efficiencies and waste including total productive maintenance that means we planning equipment maintenance to reduce downtime and mating inefficiencies. And the second is overall equipment effectiveness. We have to ensure our equipment at a measurability, performance and quality condition and take time. The time in which one unit of work must be completed in order to meet customer demand. And just in time, these strategies that strive to cut inventory by delivering components well. And we have some hidden dangers in our factory as following. The first one is high temperature vapor. We have to use vapor to cook and preheat the fruits and machine trouble. We have conveyor belts, we have pump, we have, we have mixers. So we have to reduce the machine trouble. And the leakage caused by the manufacturing of pipelines and valves. We have, you know, to do the fire based methodology. What is 5S? 5S is sort, set, shine, standardize, and sustain. You know, uh, these are the workplace improvements based on tidiness, cleanliness, and orderliness. What's more, we have formulated some regulation to increase the productivity and reduce the accident rate, which including frequent safety inspection, regular machinery maintenance, improve the skill training of operator and optimize the production plan and manufacturing technique. Finally, is standardized warehouse management. We have to, you know, to clean our warehouse uh, workplace and, you know, to set order. 
we have to you know transport our products as soon as possible. Okay, time for the presentation of the production efficiencies that we have. Now we can think about the current strategy that we are following and also think about our future strategies as well. Now think about our current strategy that we are following so far, it's a broad differentiation strategy. We are trying to differentiate our product among the competitors' product. And what is the basis of our, uh, differentiation is the local produce that we are using. So, and another thing, we are always consistent about the quality. Now think about the SWOT analysis. We have a lot of strengths, uh, some weaknesses and opportunities that are coming for us and uh, like uh, the improvement in technologies, the globalization have uh, come up with new opportunities and uh, there are like food safety concern is increasing in every country, even in Asia. So increasing demands are for there for convenient food. So in these areas, we can excel a lot. So what are the core competencies we have? We have some valuable competencies, like we have a strong financial support from Coca-Cola Mutil. We have a very strong distribution channel for properly supporting us. Then we have uh, our employees are totally motivated, loyal, and they have some extra opportunities because they are working under a large, big multinational company like Coca-Cola Mutil. We have really some rare capabilities now, like we have new market segmentations, new products, and anti-dumping commissions is supporting us. Our government has been invested us with uh, loan facilities, and we have really some important core competency, which is not easy for our competitors to follow. Like the brand image we have, the production lines, we have a lot of varieties of food, and we also have quality certificates like ISO. And there are simply some inimitable core competencies that we have, like our 100 years history of success, it's not imitable. And also think about the local uh, factor in our company, and also the support we are getting because we are currently located it, very close to our farmers. This positioning, or uh, what we can say, the location is not imitable. And if we thinking about our sustainability of our competitive advantage, I can use all these factors together, how sustainable we can become. Let's just uh, think about the sustainable competitive advantage model that was proposed by Kevin Coyne. He uh, used a three-factor model, how we can reach to sustainable competitive advantage. Now, how we can use the capability gap? Number one, we can use our past position, what we have done in past. We can use like legal things like patent rights, copyrights, or quota system. We can use our managerial capabilities. We can think about two other things. That means the breadth and depth of our capability gap. Think about the differences what we can create in our product attributes. Now, in our product, we certainly have created some differences, like our pricing. Our product is have moderate pricing level. It's not too high. It's affordable for the customers. It has premium quality. Its aesthetics are good because we are using colorful labels, especially we have the farmer's image in it and it's uh, attracting our customers uh, with some emotional uh, attachment. Our products are very much available in the market. It's uh, in all the supermarkets all over the Australia and our customers are very much aware of our products. So it's good for us. Now, how much durable are our capability gap? We already said about, okay, we whether we have any position gap, yes. Our long 100 years history is inimitable. So we have created a position gap. The brand awareness and the brand image that we have achieved through like donation to different uh, initiatives, like environmental 
a concern through the contribution to our local community is really inimitable. The second thing, we can try to create some of those factors or some of those capability which will be costly for our competitors to imitate. They will be afraid of a financial retaliation because we have very strong financial support from Coca-Cola Amityl. So whatever they're going to do, we can also retaliate against their actions. So they will think or be concerned about our financial capacity. So we all of us can come up with our future strategies, right? So looking at our strengths and opportunities, I think um, we can definitely develop a product line focusing on recent trends, which, which is organic fruits and veggies. I mean, that's one of the options. One of the, another strategy is expanding our business into rising Asian markets by tying up with local companies and growers. Yes, excellent. What do you think? I think it's quite good. And also, I think we can have the collaboration with such the airline because you know the traveler they they don't have time to consume the nutrition such as the food, so we can provide this opportunity to them. And also, there's the factory tour. Probably we can attract our tourists to visit our factory. However, I wanna stress on is the weakness we have so far. Our distribution channel is not too much so i think we can collaboration with such as the restaurant like mcdonald like to provide more healthy food to their customer and yes. also 7 and later like this convenience store people can go in and just grab and go and consume the nutrition foods hey, Mitchell, do you have any ideas i think we can reduce our production costs by decreasing uh, the factories and you know the opportunities and threats costs. Yeah. Yes, you already have highlighted how we can reduce our inefficiencies. Okay, we have to work on that. And so that yes, it, these are very much good future opportunities we can have with our future strategies. And also, I'm thinking about like uh, because we are facing threats from cheap imports, it's like people are dumping their products on us. So we can think about lobbying with our state government to establish a policy so that our local producers and companies can be protected and against the cheaper and low quality imported products. So see, we, uh, thank you guys. We have had a very fruitful discussion. We have revisited our company strategy and came up with very future strategies where good ideas have come up. And hopefully we can implement them and become the leader in the industry. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.